Hey everybody, it's Buds from Buds Northeast Outdoors. Um, B and I live in New Hampshire. I have to do a few mods to some of these lures I bought. The chandelier jig came with a treble hook. I don't know if you can actually see it, but it's your typical chandelier jig. I bought it at Runnings. I'm going to actually take a number 10 hook and put it on there for bait because in New Hampshire you can't use bait on a treble hook, even for ice fishing. So I got me a a little tiny hook it's nickel plated it's uh, black nickel and uh, I'm gonna take and put that on the chandelier jig but I've got a couple tricks that I want to use I'll show you in a minute so the way I modified this is I actually uh, I took a couple split rings and added to the one that's already on here. I don't know if you can see it. But there's two extra split rings so it hangs down further off the chandelier jig. And then I use a number 10 hook for my bait, which will either be uh, probably a wax worm or a Maggie. So that's the modification I make to all the ones that I use no treble hooks on or you can actually spend well I think it's like three or four dollars for the uh, Howie chain with the hook already on it but this right here seems to be just as well I don't think it deters the fish having the small split rings on it dangles well so the fish can inhale it and it's a pretty cool rig so that's one of my mods that I've done that's on the chandelier jig I'm going to do that a couple times more on some other stuff. So I'll bring you back and show you those when I'm done with them. Okay, you guys, here's my last mod that I'm going to share with you today. My uh, homemade auger idea. I got to thinking about it. And if my chuck loosens up, I could lose the actual drill, the auger section down the hole. So I took a pie pan, drilled a hole through it put a collar on the top with a set screw and this way here this pie pan is an 8 inch pie pan it's 6 inch blade 77 cents for the pie pan at Walmart voila I mean I might hook it down with a little epoxy or something so it doesn't rattle around and sound so bad or I might actually push that set screw down a little further and tighten it up I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Uh, what I really need to do is put a couple washers in between the uh, in between the uh, collar and the uh, pie pan, and then maybe actually put a little adhesive on there, some RTV or something. That way she doesn't rattle around quite so much. Although they say that noise there, you know, when you drill the holes, you draw the lake trout. So who knows? Maybe I'll draw some perch or panfish. I mean this is only my six inch blade and this is when I go ultra light. There may be a few days when I bring you guys out with me and we just uh, we just go jigging you know and I'll bring this rod with me and or this auger and a couple rods some maggots and we'll go to it. So I'm gonna post this video probably in a couple days it's uh, Thursday now I'm gonna be gone tomorrow it'll be Friday so I wanted to spend a little time and like I say do these mods on these lures here and stuff for you let you see the cheaper way to do stuff I am a cheapskate obviously you know there's the lure again that's that 361 whoops so like I say I just use a, a couple split rings there's actually three all together the one that came with the lure that the hook was on and I added two more plus the number 10 hook and these are ultra sharp, ultra fine hooks that you use for fly fishing. Those right there, or the Aberdeen hooks, are the best ones that I've found, really. So anyway, I'm going to let you go now. You guys have a good one. And if you like this kind of stuff, if you like learning how to save money, you know, like and subscribe. It's that easy. You know, I, I have tips for everything, cooking, camping. I'm a penny pincher at heart, so... I got it from my mom and dad. They believed if you uh, worked hard, why waste your money on uh, things you didn't really need? And you know, 
That K drill looks awesome. But $275? You know, this drill right here, you'd had to buy to go with it. The auger was $33. Pie pan was $0.77 cents at Walmart, or the cake tin here. And uh, the collar was $2.89 at Runnings. So, I mean, you know, and it weighs 1.8 pounds altogether. You know, drill and all. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's the greatest invention in the whole universe, but, you know, this Eskimo auger for 33 bucks, you know, as long as it cuts, I don't think this DeWalt drill is going to get too, too tired. And by the way, when I bought this drill, it came with two batteries, so I, I shouldn't have an issue battery-wise. So, like I say, we'll talk to you later. I'll be bringing you guys to Cabela's here tomorrow with me in the fishing show, if they allow me to bring the video camera into the fishing show. Like I say, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen some of these events where they say no video equipment allowed, so. And I don't honestly know if that's because, like, at the Verizon Center, where they've had some of these fishing shows, what they do is they... They don't allow you for the hockey games or the Disney on ice or anything like that. So maybe those signs are just for that. But I will find out tomorrow. I'll bring the stuff down and we'll see how we do. All right? Well, you guys all take care. You know, have a good one. Bud out. <clears throat> so I brought you outside to see my last few mods. The one of my picks here, <clears throat> I used a big styrofoam yellow or actually chartreuse bobber um, that floats these picks these picks are actually HT brand and they don't float <coughs> you go under the or you go into the water you're gonna be dazed your heads probably gonna go under you might lose your picks this way here at least they'll float back to the top um, and if worse comes to worse you got them around your neck you'll be easier for the divers to find you know, it's kind of a morbid sense of humor, but it's true. It'll it'll be floating up off the bottom and <coughs> make you easier to find. So, anyway, those are the ice picks. Notice I have sounders hooked to both of them. Just a tip to make it a little more efficient. Then I have this thing called the uh, Flipper Dipper by Northland. It breaks in half when you push it down in, and when you pull it back up, it spreads out. It's quite the scoop, so anyway, it makes your time a little quicker there. Then I have the cook stove that I made on the Little Buddy. All I did was take a grate for, uh, it's one that has two halves, and uh, I took it. For some reason, this Coleman container doesn't want to fit in that stand real well. But anyway, I took it, put it right over the heating elements. Um, I've got the uh, handle bent right here, so, and I have it wire tied. This doesn't get hot. This is the handle you pick it up with, and if you uh, want to adjust it up and down but still keep the heat the same temperature, you can bring it back and forth away from the heat just by sliding it. I've got the knife right there to uh, kind of tighten it up just a little bit, but... That right there, those are my mods. That way you can keep the, the heater's only got one setting, so you can raise it and lower it to keep food warm if you just want to warm it, or you can bring it down to cook it. Works out pretty well. So there you go. The ice picks with the bobber. Like I say, it floats the picks, and hopefully uh, if you <laughs> ever have the issue where you get to the point where you need to be found, they'll be able to find you a little easier, like I say the old flipper dipper and on this flipper dipper it doesn't float so I put a floaty on it one of the styrofoam keychain floats that way I don't lose it because it was about I think it was like 20 bucks or 19.95 something along those lines but it's got like a two foot long handle um, it actually has inches on it I don't know if you can make that out but you can actually use it to measure your fish. It's kind of cool. So anyway, those are the mods I made. Um. So anyway, I had to make a mod to this because it was an epic fail. The drill, as you can see, there's a hex part there. 
and there's also a round part. Well, I had two of these lock washers on there and a, and a washer to help add support to the pie pan or the cake pan. And <laughs> the drill would only go down far enough to where it was on the round. There wasn't enough exposed of the uh, hex area. So I had to take one, the washer off that's underneath. And I also took the collar off. And so I got myself the extra clearance. We'll get back to you on whether or not this works. Like I say, it's only a $33 drill, so... And it's a, I can still use it as a hand drill, even if it doesn't end up working with the, uh... With the DeWalt, so... Anyway, I figured I'd let you know how I... What happened with that, how it failed, and how I'm trying to fix it. So, here you go, guys. Alright, so here we have a boat seat swivel. I'm going to put it on the bottom of my uh, tip-up seat and we're going to uh, huh, way out of focus we're going to connect it to the bottom of the seat and then I'm going to put it on my rover that's over there standing up so I can work on it yes it's in the kitchen in the lodge so uh, I don't have to stand outside in the cold I store that thing inside all year long so it doesn't get eat up by mice so anyway, I tried to take care of my equipment. So there it is at the Chapnel Rover and my little bass swivel seat here. We're going to live in style. I'm also going to make an adapter to hold my auger on there. And I'll show you that after we get it all done. Alright, so we got the swivel mounted to the bottom. It has multiple holes to fit different brand swivels. This here's, <coughs> excuse me, just a cheap one I bought at Walmart. It was on sale, it was like $9.99 on clearance. But anyway, it fits this Bass Pro Shops camo seat really well. So now we'll continue on to hook it on to the to the sled, to the shelter. Alright. So I've pre-marked the holes. If <laughs> the focus will work. I pre-marked the holes and I drilled them with a quarter inch drill bit. Yep, I did, no. Really. And, uh, it should mount right on there really good. I got some flat washers underneath for where the nuts go to add a little support to the system. But, uh, we're going to be okay here. So anyway, I'll show you the seat when she's all mounted up. So here's my chair invention. It, uh, I've got a U-bolt that comes up out of the chair. It's a flat on the back one. It doesn't come up quite far enough. I'm going to have to modify that. I'm going to have to get another U-bolt that comes up further. But the way it comes through, the cushion protects your back so it, it's not going to bother you. And it holds the auger really well. It holds it this side up. So it's a pretty good little contraption. I'll take the auger off and take it open the seat up and show you with me sitting down on it it's pretty neat so there it is the invention sitting in the middle of the floor at the lodge here I'm gonna hop in it I got a light it's a magnetic light so that you can bring it in you don't have to worry about auxiliary batteries it's a LED light says it's good for about a hundred hours so we'll see what we got here <coughs> excuse me so here we are inside the shanty I have the uh, vents right here on either side of the shop now. Got the rear window so I can see out back. I can see out the sides. Got a front window. And as you can see, this light lights it up pretty good in here. I'm going to have to hang a, put a hanger or something off of that because these <laughs> conduit pipes that they used here with the galvanized coating, I'm, I'm thinking they're just not very magnetic. Because I can't get it to stick. The thing sticks to my pellet stove, the door, when I'm cleaning the pellet stove like nobody's business. So, apparently these pipes here aren't all that magnetic. But the good thing is, is I can take and uh, hook it on here and adjust it. It has a swivel on the bracket. But I got quite a bit of light in here. And I can also hook up another one. Put a Velcro thing down on by my uh, legs. Maybe that's how I'll hook this one up is with Velcro. 
and that way I can peel it right off real easy I don't have to worry about a hanger and adjusting it and this and that and the other thing because it's it's aimed straight down now and you can see my kitchen floor I uh, apologize for the mess but we've been hard at work here um, so we'll be making videos ice fishing videos soon I don't know if I'm going to bring Nike out he's never actually been ice fishing if you hear that that's my uh, blower from my stove that's on because I started my auger up in the house here and it's uh it's the propane one but <coughs> if you don't hear from me again you'll know what happened <laughs> so anyway we are all set to go all I gotta do is clean out the trunk I got the car back yesterday I went out and bought some stuff today to hook this seat down with and I'm gonna have to go get a better U-clamp a longer one tomorrow a U-bolt to hold the auger down but that should be no problem and then we'll be all set all I'm going to do is I'm going to make some legs out of uh, two by fours and put some cross-country skis on it and make a smitty sled that way I'm going to actually connect it inside the uh, the shanty here the sled part and I'm going to just hook it down with wing nuts that way I can take it apart when I get to the car and it's no big deal it'll be awesome so anyway, and I'm going to countersink some nuts in to hold the whole bolt so it stays in when I'm taking things out and I don't lose anything. I think that's probably my best bet. I mean, I'm only going to use a 2x4. It's not going to raise it way up off uh, the ice or snow, but what it will do is it'll allow me to pull it a little easier. I don't know how many of you know, but I have a really bad knee. So uh, anything I can do to make it easier, I will. And this is pretty cool. Now I have a back to my chair. I can actually sit in here and snooze and dream about bells. I have bells on all those tip-ups, if you remember. And every time I hear a bell go off, I go, and you, you, you probably uh, have seen a snail run at a quicker pace than I do. So, anyway, this here's my shanty mods that I've done, got done today. And boy, let me tell you, hooking that chair down, those are inch and a half bolts I put through that wood on the on the frame here and let me tell you something getting those down in there you gotta be the Pope not to swear a couple times you're skinning your knuckles and trying to get the hole and the thing moves a little bit when you try to swivel the seat to line the hole up and the whole thing moves and misses the hole and it's like oh my god of course I only had to do it four times thank god so <laughs> anyway I'll show you my uh, Vexler mod that I made okay all right, I'll be right back. So here's the back of my Vex. I drilled a hole in the handle, as you can see, right down here. I put a bolt through. I've got a shelf brace that I went up. There's a bracket in the back of the Markham with a a camera mount there. I used a quarter twenty bolt, ran a a little bit of spacer from the uh, camera itself back to the mount. So now here is my Markham mounted on the Vexlar. Just turn it on. Ta-da! No, really, turn it on. There we go, Markham. Now hook my battery up real quick. Maybe I've already got it hooked up. Nope. I unhooked that so the battery doesn't run down. So anyway, we hooked that up. There we go. Now the battery thing's going. There's my Vexler, my double vision, my own little uh, modification so I can actually look down, see the fish, and see them on the flasher at the same time. The only thing I do is I I put the cone down the uh, the hole straight down where I'm jigging for the uh, Vexler, and I put the camera off on a side hole for the uh, Markham so anyway here we are hold it five seconds supposedly one two three four five six one two three four there we go <laughs> And shut the old uh, Vexler off because we'll be out on the ice probably Saturday. I'm gonna, you're gonna get to meet my friend Daryl. And no, we're not going in the boat, so don't worry, he won't flip over the seat. 
So anyway, there's my invention for the Vexlar and the old Markham camera. Um, I think it's pretty neat. It does make the Vexlar a little heavy. Probably about 10-15 pounds between the two batteries, but I still think it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool invention or a modification. So anyway, we'll see you guys out on the ice. Those are my mods for this year. I don't expect I'll have any more ideas. Maybe Daryl can suggest a few things. Talk to you later. Bye. Yes, sir. Markham Technologies.